Has Calvin Jackson kind of done anything to earn himself some more reps at X, or was that more of a result of, of Tate not being as consistent out there? Um, I think uh, <clears throat> I think he has. I mean, he's he's done really well in practice. I think he's played well in practice. Um, he's got uh, <clears throat> a quick burst to him, which we like. Also, there's no wasted steps. Calvin Jackson doesn't have any wasted steps, and um, <clears throat> you know, and it's a competitive situation. I think as of now. Uh, they're pretty dead even, and then whoever's hot, whoever's out there, you know, uh, getting after it the hardest will probably play the most uh, this next week. Don't know if it'd be Tay or Calvin, but I think either one are good options. How can uh, Tay become more consistent and get a few more balls coming his way? Um, I don't know. We've got a lot of good receivers. He's, I think he's still our leading receiver, so it's not like he's really got a shortage. Um, uh, you know, I, I think just play hard. You know, some of it's uh, luck and opportunity, but the harder he plays, probably the more balls he'll get. Bo Baldwin offenses have had a lot of success against you, um, but not so much Saturday. Why do you think that was? Yeah, uh, well, I thought we played really well on defense, except for I thought we could have got him off the, the field quicker. I thought offensively we moved the ball pretty well, but. We weren't as great in uh, key situations, and then of course, uh, you know, they're, uh, uh, statistically they might be the best defense in the conference, and I think they are a really good one. Um, but uh, you know, I thought we played hard. They did affect the quarterback on defense, which I thought was important. I mean, uh, uh, sacked him. I forget how many times. Maybe five. What is there about ESOP that Gardner has done him a couple times in some key spots, the Utah game uh, against SC and now last uh, Saturday, uh, that Gardner has this kind of faith in him? Uh, he runs great routes. You know, part of it is, is just getting familiar with him, getting you know, the two of them getting familiar with one another because, you know, they haven't played together much. And <clears throat> um, and then, you know, ESOP, uh, as he's gotten in shape, his skills have improved even more and more. And, and, uh, you know, then I think that uh, uh, they've gotten on the same page on those things. And, you know, Esau always has been elusive and pretty precise rough on and all that. At what point did you guys know that Max would be able to, to come in and contribute as much as he has? Was, was there a point during spring camp or during fall camp where you kind of knew, okay, he's, he's going to be one of, one of the two guys? Uh, look, uh, promising right away in fall camp, right away. Uh, looked promising in fall camp, and then um, he had a consistency, and uh, he's very coachable to the point where you know you, you tell him something once, and he pretty well takes care of it. Then um, <clears throat> you know I would say about halfway through camp, we knew he was going to start. That he'd be one of the starters. Yeah, he, he kind of flipped from Colorado to you guys. Had you guys known about him and been recruiting him before he before he committed to the Buffaloes? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, if I remember it right, and um, if he says something different, it's obviously accurate. The way I remember it, though, is um, uh, we knew about him, offered him, uh, he committed quickly to the Buffaloes, and then, you know, then we were lucky enough to get him after the fact. I know he, he kind of went through an ACL injury, a pretty bad one, his, his junior season in high school. And you guys kind of stuck with him. Did, did you guys still know that he was obviously still a player you wanted to pursue and would still be able to impact you guys the way they? Oh, yeah, he was. Years? He was. Uh, he was well on his way to becoming the Colorado Player of the Year. So yeah, it was, yeah, he was making it pretty clear to everybody he was pretty good. You know, yeah. You know. I think the Christian McCaffrey comparisons he gets are, are pretty accurate. You know what I heard is they is they actually train together. Somehow, I don't know, these guys will train wherever they train, but I think there's some kind of a, a trainer or a, a workout place down there that they actually you know, train together or knew each other for training or have trained <coughs> together or something like that. So. Is it a little rarer for a running back to, to be that college ready at, at, at that age than, than some other positions? Uh. <coughs> I think running back's actually one of the easier ones. You know, I think um, um, 
virtual walk or what did did he win the Heisman Trophy his freshman year or his sophomore year? I can't remember, but it was pretty early. But anyway, um, you know, I, I think uh, running back if, uh, if if you think strong and quick and fast, and uh, and then you know, and you can keep the stuff simple enough, depending on what they can uh, handle, um, they can get their skills out there pretty fast because it's not. <clears throat> like an offensive lineman where you're choreographing it with uh, the other linemen around you. It's not like uh, somewhere like um, the receiver where, you know, there's a, a higher degree of, you know, just rep after rep after rep after rep getting familiar with the quarterback and, and you know, how he throws the ball and where he likes you to be. Uh, uh, I think corners can do that sometimes, step in and play, you know, because, um, you know, what they do is extremely physical, but uh, uh, from the neck up, you can simplify it. And then I also think um, a really explosive uh, defensive uh, lineman, especially like an end or something, because, you know, D-line, obviously, you can move them around. But if they're an explosive, quick step guy, and uh, you know, get it sorted what their gap is and go after the guy with the ball. I think those guys you know, can impact early. And then I think uh, as you get inside a defensive tackle or um, the offensive line, a lot of times you know, your body's just not conditioned, you don't have the weight on, you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, I mean, it's just gonna take time. So I, I do think it's a position where a guy has a shot early, yeah. Would you say that? Pass protection is one of the tougher parts of four running backs that are making that transition from high school to college? Yeah, well, we make them do everything they do on Sunday, really. I mean, you have to rush the ball, you have to uh, you have to rush the ball, you have to catch the ball, and you have to block. I mean, you have to do all three. In college, a certain amount of the time, there's, you know, guys that, you know, just do, say, one of the three. But now in our offense, you have to do all three. And... Uh, uh, I think the pass protection, um, the protection and the blocking is probably, you know, it's the most uh, complex and then uh, that they have to sort out. And then also it's uh, uh, maybe not the top of their list of priorities. You know, I mean, you know, they want the ball in their hands a little more than they'd prefer to do that. So. On that uh, missed extra point at the end of the game, that set on the like, I don't know. I don't talk about injuries anyway under the best of circumstances, but that didn't have anything to do with the bad snap. I can tell you that. That was his fault. So. Hey, any questions on the phone line for Coach? <clears throat> hey, Coach. Mike, um, this is the Super Post here. Hey, Coach, uh, you talked about Max and kind of the impressions he made in spring ball. I mean, what has enabled him to just come into – his first year of college kind of put on the show and then second part i mean what's his ceiling as a college player over these next couple of years what's his what ceiling oh what's hard his, it's hard to i think he'll get even better than better it's difficult to say um uh but he's a guy that picks things up very quickly and i'll tell you the other thing because he hadn't caught a lot of balls in in um in high school and so although i uh I believe you can teach anybody to catch. Uh, he already knew how. I mean, you know, we didn't have any real film of it, but he already knew how and already had good hands. I think really just refining his skills and where he's at and things like that. And then, you know, like anybody, I, I do think he's going to get uh, uh, stronger and faster. And so, um, you know, he's well on his way. I don't know where his ceiling is, but... Um, um, because, you know, we're kind of in the business of not having ceilings, you know, so. Um, uh, but, no, I think uh, he'll continue to get better and better. Go ahead, Vince. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Well, my question got asked. All right, any other questions on the phone line for Coach? Uh, Coach, you talked about your offensive. This is Justin and hi, thanks. Um, 
And we've talked about your offensive line as a unit, but one of the guys really standing out is Abe Lucas. I know we really don't call the names of individual offensive line players unless something's going wrong, but what have you seen from him at such a young age? Um, I, Abe, I think, does a really good job. Well, first of all, he's, he's – uh, I mean, he's huge. Well, if I haven't seen anybody at his age that big. I mean, uh, so let's start with that one. Um, <clears throat> and then – you know, big, long arms. He's not, uh, you know, he's not uh, the guy with a big belly. I mean, he's all cut up and sharp looking, and then he uh, moves his feet pretty well. The most impressive thing is that uh, um, is Abe's one of the best offensive linemen in the conference as a, as a freshman, and, uh, and I think that's impressive. And then, because uh, I do think that's obvious, but the position hard to start at early. I mean, because you have to choreograph with the others, and you have to, you know, kind of have those big, solid uh, man-type muscles in order to, um, uh, you know, survive in there. And uh, and he's done a good job, and he's gotten better and better as the season's gone on. And uh, you know, there's an, another guy that, as far as as long as we're talking about ceilings, uh, I don't know where his ceiling is, but it's up there pretty good. Uh, now, you guys have faced uh, different types of, you know, adversity, I guess, if you want to call it. You had a shootout with Stanford and followed up with a defensive gritty battle. What does it mean for you to just come out of both of those with a, a win? What does it say about your team? Well, I'm proud of our team and how tough we played and how we played together. The other thing is, is those are very tough opponents. Um, you know, this whole conference is tough. so. You know, just to do it from one week to the next, I guess, is, is perhaps the hardest part. Because um, every one of them were dangerous. And then, uh, uh, you know, just the, the consistency. And we've been pretty consistent about being ready to play, and we've really got to be ready to play this week.